Welcome back to Paul's Tech News, and indeed, welcome to my first installment for 2023, a year that is still ripe with promise, or alternatively, one that has already shat the proverbial bed, depending on who you ask. I began the year with a trip to Las Vegas for CES, which was once an annual tradition in the before times, but one that I was happy to return to. And many thanks to those of you who watched my videos on that event and who commented and clicked those like buttons and stuff. But CES is old news now, relegated to the dustbin of history like so many unused RTX 4080 12 gig retail boxes. So let us now turn our eyes to the glorious future that awaits us in 2023. A future that once again includes weekly installments of this show, distilling only the most potent and portentous tech news from the previous week into a strong and heady brew to be enjoyed at your leisure. It's good to be back. Cheers. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair Xenion Flex OLED Gaming Monitor, which can bend from completely flat up to 800R curvature. But there's a lot more to this display, which features an ultra-wide 45-inch 3440x1440 panel with a 240Hz refresh rate and 0.03 millisecond gray-to-gray response time. The spec list also includes NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, AMD FreeSync Premium certification, Auto HDR with up to 1000 nit brightness, 99% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage, a sophisticated burn-in prevention system, and an integrated stand with a range of connectivity. Click the sponsor link in the video description for more on the Corsair Xenion Flex. Should I note that I haven't had lunch? I'm doing this on an empty stomach. Valentine's Day is still a month away, but love was in the air on Wednesday when AMD apparently offered PC gamers an actual reason to look forward to the 14th of February. It would also be the launch day for the hotly anticipated 3D vCache versions of their Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, the 7950X 3D, 7900X 3D, and 7800X 3D, which are widely expected to once again be the best CPUs for gaming if they bring the same performance advances that we saw last gen with the 5800X 3D. AMD formally announced the three-chip lineup during CES last week, but had only committed to a February launch time frame. But when the official AMD product pages were updated Wednesday with the February 14th launch date, most assumed that the date had been fixed and V-Day would be just slightly less depressing for PC building enthusiasts this year. But then, just 24 hours later, AMD abruptly canceled their Valentine's Day plans, an all too familiar experience for the PC gaming audience. Their PR statement simply said, that that date is incorrect. We have not confirmed a launch date at this time. We will provide updates on the expected availability of these processors at a future date. At least they gave us enough advanced notice to cancel our dinner reservations. But on a side note, if you're interested in one of my favorite tech news episodes from 2022, check out the Valentine's Day installment, which went hard on the innuendo for a full 13 minutes. A personal record. Speaking of innuendo though, AMD has at least apologized for their premature release, adding, Wow, how embarrassing. That's never happened to me before. Those X3D CPUs aren't the only products that AMD announced last week, though. There was also a trio of Ryzen 7000 CPUs without 3Ds or indeed any Xs to be spoken of at all. The Ryzen 7900, 7700, and 7600 launched on Monday, less than a week after they were announced, and you might note that there weren't as many reviews at launch as is typical. And that's likely because many reviewers, like myself, were at CES, and it's tough to set up a full benchmarking configuration in a Vegas hotel room while also scrambling to cover the flood of CES announcements. How about the week before, you might ask? You know, when we were all supposed to be neglecting our families and giving up any semblance of end-of-the-year peace and downtime by reviewing the 4070 Ti? My point is, I would like to say thank you to the reviewers who did get launch articles and videos made in time for the RTX 4070 Ti launch as well as these CPUs, and I would also like to encourage the big manufacturers to at least briefly consider the logistics of launching so many products in so short a time frame at a time of year when most people like me are simply exhausted from trying to get through the prior three months of launches and, you know, the holidays and family and stuff. Okay, rant over. For the 7900, 7700, and 7600 though, to sum up, these are good CPUs at much more compelling price points than their loftier X versions, and they include stock coolers, which is great for budget builders. 65 watt TDPs across the board means cooling is much more reasonable, and yes, those stock coolers aren't the best, but they can keep up. They are unlocked for overclocking, so a cooler upgrade could release more performance for those who want to OC. And in particular, it's nice to have a $230 option in the 7600 for those who want to get in on the AM5 platform. The 7900 as well gets big wins in the efficiency column thanks to having more cores that it can run at lower clock speeds. 
For gaming, all three chips are about 4-5% slower than their X-enabled counterparts at 1080p. Despite the generally positive reception for these new CPUs though, the specter of AM5's platform cost still looms. DDR5 memory is still quite expensive, if not quite as expensive as it was last year, but reasonably kitted out B650 motherboards however still start in the low $200 range and go up from there, so budget builders have no good option to pair up with a $230 Ryzen 7600. And of course, those 7000 X3D chips are coming in a month, give or take, so many buyers are still waiting for that launch before they make a decision. And I would like to say a big shout out to Steve from Hardware Unboxed for his work on this review as well. Gotta remember to drink my beer in between takes. Enough about AMD though, because Intel also had a big CPU launch this week, their new best and fastest CPU ever, the 13900KS where they add an S on the end, which stands for sucks to be you 13900K non-S buyers. Intel has been doing this for a few generations now, binning out the silicon for their top end CPUs that can hit higher clock speeds, and then launching a special edition version with a bit more performance and a significant increase in the price. Steve from Hardware Unbox was once again one of the few reviewers who was able to publish launch benchmark results, and he said that at $700, the 13900KS is $100, or 17% more expensive than the 13900K without the S, while eking out about 5% more performance thanks to hitting clock speeds up to the advertised 6 GHz peak turbo frequency. That is not an all-core frequency though, and even with a 420mm Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 AIO and Thermal Grizzly's special contact frame, the chip still hit 100 degrees Celsius within seconds running Cinebench R23 and throttled to something shy of 5.6 GHz. With a more typical but still expensive 360mm AIO cooling setup, it averages 5480MHz, or just 40MHz better than the 13900K. So Halo tier buyers might consider that they'll likely need to invest a bit more into an open loop cooling setup or similar on top of the CPU's retail price if they want to actually run at those higher frequencies closer to 6 GHz. For gaming, the 13900K and KS are still on top, but AMD's chips like the 7700X are close behind. Without god tier 7200 speed DDR5 memory, the 13900KS was just 2% faster than AMD's 8-core AM5 CPU, and the 7700X is significantly less expensive. Intel has likely launched this chip in anticipation of AMD's forthcoming 7000 X3D CPUs, but it really seems like they're stretching the limits of what can be tamed by a typical AIO cooling solution in a desktop PC. Puget Systems also published some test results, and they concurred. They found no meaningful performance increase over the i9-13900K. The 13900KS exists to pad Intel's stats in upcoming CPU battles, but Steve sums it up well in his conclusion. The Core i9-13900KS is a dumpster fire of a processor, and most builders should just ignore it. You might not have been able to ignore the slew of articles and videos that went up this week about MSI's popular afterburner GPU overclocking software. It's dead, Jim or so it seemed to appear after developer Alexei Unwinder Nikolichuk, Nikolichuk, I'm probably close enough, posted several updates on the Guru 3D forums. The underlying reason is that Alexei is located in Russia, and Russia has been subject to international sanctions because they invaded Ukraine last year. Many companies have stopped business operations in Russia, so MSI stopped performing their obligations under the Afterburner license due to the political situation, says Alexei, which in short means he has not been getting paid for his work. There seems to be a lack of communication between MSI and Alexei as well, whether that's due to the sanctions or MSI dropping the ball is not quite clear. The situation has raised other questions too, like whether MSI has actually stopped doing business in Russia or not, but all that aside, what's to be expected for the future of Afterburner? MSI followed up quickly on Monday when the story began drawing attention, telling Hassan from WCCF Tech that they are working to get payment through to Alexei so he can continue development. PR statements made to other outlets indicate that MSI fully intends to continue with MSI Afterburner, but perhaps most telling is this, the actual download page for MSI Afterburner on Guru 3D, which now hosts version 4.6.5 beta 4 published just this week on January 11th, after all this news broke. So it seems that MSI Afterburner is not dead yet. I have a confession. 
I've been going commando for too long, so it's time to slip into some comfy, soft tech briefs. Now with 50% less chafage. The ongoing battle for consumers' right to repair in the U.S. had a positive update this week, as it appeared that John Deere, one of the primary line steppers in this area, capitulated by signing a Memorandum of Understanding with the American Farm Bureau Federation on Sunday. Problem solved, many outlets seem to say. Farmers win. But hold on there, says Right to Repair champion Louis Rossman, who has continued his inspirational lobbying efforts on behalf of consumers in the past few years. A memorandum of understanding is not your typical legally binding contract and is full of cutouts and special circumstances that will continue to allow John Deere to prevent farmers from repairing their own ridiculously expensive tractors. It's a smokescreen to try to convince concerned citizens and legislators that the issue is resolved when in fact, it is not. And if you need further proof of this, Lewis didn't just talk to some industry rep, he talked to a farmer. Well, look, we have a memorandum of understanding. You don't need this right to repair bill. You, uh, the idea that if this headline gets out that John Deere gave farmers what they want, that legislators may say, okay, we don't really have to care about this anymore. We can focus on something else. Yeah, I, uh, gosh, by the time my combine's done, I'm gonna have spent $70,000 on repairs at my local John Deere dealership in the past two months. Now we all know that hardware accelerated video encoding is pretty rad, and the latest GPUs from AMD, Nvidia, and even Intel feature hardware supported AV1 encoding, with Nvidia actually including two AV1 encoders in their RTX 40 series cards. But you need software to leverage that hardware, and while AV1 encoding for Nvidia's 40 series cards has been supported in the popular streaming software OBS since November, an update on Sunday has now added AMD's Radeon 7000 series GPUs as well as Intel's ARC cards to the support list. AV1 looks way better than H.264, especially at lower bit rates, which is great for bandwidth limited streamers, and has been broadly accepted as the successor to H.265 as streaming moves to higher resolutions and refresh rates. If you'd like the latest version, you can download it from obsproject.com. There were a few vendors who didn't have much of a presence at CES last week, and surprisingly, Corsair was one of them. But perhaps it was because the show was simply too small to host a reveal of this magnitude. The RMX Shift series of power supplies, now with modular cable connectors on the side. That's right, why have your PSU cables on the back of your power supply when they could be on the side, wedged uncomfortably up against your case's side panel. To be fair, there are a lot of cases where this would not be an issue, and it's good to see Corsair thinking outside the box, so to speak, with their PSU designs, but I gotta be honest, this picture just looks a little bit weird to me. Looks photoshopped. Finally, I wanted to recap a story that might have slipped past you during the CES madness last week. AMD Radeon RX 7900 series GPUs, the stock designed ones, have a known problem with their vapor chamber coolers that AMD publicly acknowledged. We are working to determine the root cause of the unexpected throttling, they say. Based on our observations, the issue relates to the thermal solution used in the AMD reference design and appears to be present in a limited number of the cards sold. So we don't know how limited or how widespread this issue might be, but if you have a made by AMD 7900 XT or XTX, it's probably a good idea to run some monitoring software to make sure that your temps aren't too toasty and your card isn't throttling. If it is, get in touch with AMD for a replacement. And thanks for getting in touch with me this week as there truly is no replacement for my tech news summary, which I'm glad to be supplying you with once more. If you enjoyed it, maybe click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. And check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. And I will be back again next Sunday, so subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.